guys, we started getting goose eggs. I'm so excited. Look. <laughs> thing that I suspected about geese that I already knew about ducks was that they may bury their eggs. Ducks will bury their eggs in the mud or the straw, whatever they feel like at the moment actually. So I had a feeling that geese may also bury their eggs because they're all basically also waterfowl. So this is where they sleep right now. This is originally meant to be a chicken coop obviously but um, this will eventually be uh, the large chicken coop uh, for kind of everybody. But for now, it's a safe place for the geese to be. And I say safe, and there's just a whole other story coming soon. So I had a feeling that geese hid their eggs, and I'm gonna start digging around this hay and see how many I can find. I've already found one. So I also have to be careful where I step here because uh, they could be buried anywhere. All this is where they sleep. So, um, and if you're wondering what these are, this will eventually be for the chickens to roost on because chickens like to sleep up off the ground. So here we go. Wish me luck. It's like Easter. Ah! <laughs> Rosie's been getting at it. Okay. Fighting. Rosie was born. I'm gonna have to go back and look. I got these geese from a friend of mine that has geese on her farm. She lives um, near here in. Uh, she has a cool farm. We're gonna go see her at some point. I asked her last year if I could get some goose eggs to incubate because she has some of the prettiest geese and I just love them. And, uh, oh, <laughs> here's a chicken egg. So I guess one of the chickens laid an egg in here and Rosie instinctually uh, buried it. <laughs> But here you can see the difference between the size of a goose egg and a large chicken egg. Now, mind you, these are large chicken eggs. These are, these are about the size of an extra large chicken egg that you find in the store. So, what's the difference? Ah, okay. Three eggs, let's keep going. So, um, My friend Tanya. I got some eggs from her last year. I think I got about five or six. Jeremy dropped one on the way into the incubator. Dropped one and broke it. Just a little bit of information. Um, I got about five or six eggs from her and incubated them and I got three geese out of it. And it ended up being two males and one female, which I originally thought it was two females and one male, which was what I was really hoping for. But, I mean, I got one female out of it, so that's, oh, okay. Here's another chicken egg. All right. Um, so, so that was exciting, so, Get, you know, hatch out little geese and watch watch them grow and I'll I'll try to find some video and post that so you guys can see of when they were little. I also have some cool footage of them hatching, which I'll attach here too. Okay, so I got two goose eggs. Two goose eggs and two 
chicken eggs. Now, ooh, this one's cracked. This one's cracked, because sometimes if they freeze too many times, they'll crack. You can freeze eggs, but um, also, I'm very leery about eggs that have been buried because you just never know. Now, that being said, eggs that have been freshly laid have, what, have what's called a bloom on them. And uh, it, it just, something that comes out of the chicken while the, it's a layer that comes out of the chicken while the uh, egg is being laid. And it protects the egg, keeps it fresh. So in nature, in the wild, um, it is to keep the egg uh, protected while it is incubating inside there, while the mama's laying on it. But in, for our uses, if you have a fresh farm egg, you really don't have to refrigerate it. Um, you can keep them out on the counter with the bloom on them, that means unwashed, for about three weeks. If you want to make them last even longer than that, you can coat them with mineral oil and keep them in a cool, dark place and they'll last for a good long time. I'll have to look that up and see exactly how long. And it's also, it's been cold. So I'd say these are, I would guess like 95% that they'll be good still. So, but there's a cool little thing called a float test that you could do. You just fill up a bowl of water that's uh, deeper than the egg is wide and uh, put the egg in there. And if it floats, it's not good. Not good. Don't open it. Don't crack it. Get it out of your house as quickly as possible. Don't put it in the trash because it will bust at any time. There are gases built up in there. It is rotting. It is the most horrific smell you've probably ever smelled in your entire life. And it's really hard to get out of everything. So get it out of your house. Don't put it in the trash can. I speak from experience, okay? I've had them independently burst. It's horrible, okay? So Anyway, but the thing is, the cats really love these raw eggs, so um, I'm just gonna take this over to them and they're gonna have a nice little treat. But because it's been cold and because these still have the bloom on them, I'd say these are still be good. I am so excited. Now, I'm really, I'm really anxious to incubate a goose egg from our own geese. It's okay, Johnny. It's just a girl's fight. Anyway, there's always a cat fight. They say that you should wait just a little bit further into their first season to pick the eggs that you're gonna incubate because they're more likely to be more fertile and they're more likely to uh, come to full maturity. Um, there's a lot that can go wrong in the incubation process. Goose eggs can be even trickier because the humidity has to be just right. It goes up and down. You have to change it throughout the day. You have to miss them throughout the day at different times. You have to turn them throughout the day at different times if you don't have an automatic turner, which I don't. So, well, I do. I have an automatic turning incubator, but it's only for smaller eggs like chicken eggs. It's not, I don't have the attachment that's big enough for goose eggs. So it's kind of a bit of an involved process. And I don't know how long these eggs have been in here, although they probably haven't been in here for very, very long. I've been suspicious that she was going to start laying at any time because it's getting ready to be spring. Speaking of, I've kind of got some bad news to tell you. We'll go into the greenhouse. So I've got a little bad news, um, referring to the geese and something like this happens almost every single year. Um, and it happens around this time of year. It sneaks up on me. It's crazy. Um, but a coyote got Oki. Oh. He was a frizzle and, um, and I really loved him. I really wanted a frizzle goose. That's just, that's what happens, man. Almost every year. And they don't, and it's hard because you don't, you're not thinking it's spring because you're still having these you know, 30 degree days, 20 degree nights, worrying about your pipes freezing and things like that. And uh, so you're not so much thinking, well, it's spring. But as soon as these coyotes sense any kind of, you know, warm weather at all, they go into overdrive. They start feeding a lot more 
and uh, hunting hardcore because they're all getting ready to have pups in the spring. So uh, last year, um, something similar happened. The coyotes came in and got a lot of my little, um, really young chickens that I had, little boutique chickens, uh, when I was out of town and Jeremy was just here because the coyotes watch you. They, you don't know it, and but there's a tree line like all kind of all the way around our main settled area, and um, the coyotes will watch you from the tree line. They observe you and they know exactly what your schedule is. They know who is uh, usually around and they notice when you're not. So Jeremy goes to work all day and I'm usually around the grounds just doing things and watching things, taking care of things, watering animals, all that. So they saw when I was gone and they waited. It's funny because it happened. Uh, I was gone for about four or five days and it happened about the fourth day that I was gone. They're so smart. They watch. And uh, it's a little creepy to know that they're right there in the tree line um, beyond where I can see even right now. Um, but they're not going to come uh, too close. It's kind of have to be cautious when you're out this far because you know we do have mountain lions. One of the very first uh, experiences we had on this property was uh, we went and collected a trail cam that was back in the back of the property and that trail cams are just something like it's a camera that you mount to a tree and uh, usually hunters use it to see what deer have come by and kind of things like that finding out what game is going near their uh, their hunting spot or their tree stand we collected the images from that trail cam that had been out there for a while from somebody else and it had a image of a mountain lion on it or a cougar I'm not sure exactly what is around here probably a cougar I guess um, and it was just plain as day the whole thing tip to tail um, it was terrifying so um, just to know that a, that big of an animal is just right in our backyard but um, they were here first so we are just settling on their property um, but so this happens every year almost it's in some shape or form, uh, this was really, this was really rough because um, they were just kind of, the geese were just getting to full maturity and, um, but it, it happens and coyotes are really intelligent and they, man, they sneak up on me because that's what they do. In my head, it's still winter and you know, bam, you get one warm day and they are just out there getting anything and everything. So, and I know it was coyotes because, you know, when there's no piles of feathers or anything like that, like, um, foxes will leave a pile of feathers and, um, different, different birds of prey will do different things and, uh, but coyotes, you just know it, it's coyotes because they disappear. The, the bird, or the bird, or the whatever it is, just disappears. And uh, that next night, I, I came outside at night because I could hear them so loud. It sounded like they were just behind the house, the house where we're building. And it was, a, it was pretty creepy. I mean, it sounds like there are hundreds of coyotes, but it's really just, I don't know how many is in the pack, but it sounds like a lot, but also every dog within like a mile radius, you could hear like howling and barking because they were, you know, pretty upset that so many coyotes were howling and it's, it's a little creepy, but like I said, they were here first. So that was a tough thing to lose. Um, cause I watched them hatch out of an egg and I raised them, um, in the camper. <laughs> Well, I mean, when they were tiny, because uh, you have to keep them warm. And I don't know, it's always hard to lose an animal like that, but that is something that they say on farms where there is livestock, there is dead stock, because something is always out there trying to take down what you're trying to bring up. Whether it be the plants you're raising in your garden, there are thousands of pests and birds uh, and animals just waiting to eat all of these tasty treats. And out this far, 
the reality is there's a really heavy predator population. And when they see a homestead like this where it's a bunch of tasty animals all gathered into one little space where they can just kind of take their pick, um, it's, it's a little bit, it, it makes them brave enough to, you know, come out and, and take a chance. So we try as hard as we can to keep the fences strong and keep everything safe. We have our livestock dog, uh, Rusty, and he was actually in that night because it was really cold and I felt bad for him. So I let him sleep inside. I shouldn't have done that, but he's a little spoiled. So I learned that lesson the hard way again. And that's the thing about farming and homesteading is you just, there's always a hard lesson to learn. There will always be uh, something that sneaks up on you. There, there, it's just, it's just life. It's the circle of life. We're gonna miss you, Oki. You are a good goose. So we're down to one male and one female now. Uh, that is Mr. Lavender and Rosie. And I am hoping to buy another female from the same friend that I got the eggs off of uh, last year, Tanya. Um, I'm hoping to buy another female goose because she has lots of geese. And uh, she said in April I can probably buy a, a little female goose off of her. This is the time of year when you take stock in um, your property. And I spend a lot of time walking around looking at uh, how everything is doing. And right now everything kind of looks dead and it's a little disheartening sometimes. And also it's uh, the beginning of a lot of work this time of year is. And it's a little overwhelming, but every year we keep at it and we make it work. So we're getting ready to start another year, guys. I mean, I'm standing out here in a t-shirt. It goes up and down a lot here right now. You know, there's a lot of uh, cold spells and all that, but warm weather is coming. Whenever I'm going around looking at the spaces that I have to plant in, I naturally think about what I'm gonna put in them. So I ordered some seeds and I'm gonna open them with you guys right now. I'm really excited. I love seeds. I'm gonna hurt. I'm a seed nerd. Okay, so we're gonna go back in the greenhouse. So, I feel like I have to cover a lot in this video because a lot is going on. Um, but I ordered these seeds. These are all of the cold weather seed, cold weather vegetables that honestly I probably already should have started. But here we are and it's not too late. It's still mid-February, so it's gonna get cold again, for sure. But these vegetables kind of need a little bit of cool weather to thrive. And you have to take advantage of that really quickly because here it gets super hot super fast. So in here I have uh, butter crunch lettuce, oak leaf lettuce, which I'm not exactly sure what that is because I've never grown it before. Um, romaine lettuce, which everybody knows what that is. And I guess I should go back and say butter crunch lettuce if you haven't had it before. It's pretty common at the grocery store, but man, it is so different grown from seed. And uh, it's got so much flavor. It's a very tender, very sweet lettuce. I love it. It's amazing for wraps and things like that, but it's just, it's one of my very favorite lettuces. Also, it has the word butter in it. So it makes me feel like I am indulging, but I'm just eating a vegetable. Does anybody else like that? So, okay, yeah, there are scallions in here, which are onions, basically. Walla Walla onions, which are sweet. Um, leek onions, which are a little bit more mild. Uh, speaking of leeks, I'm really, really hoping we transferred some ramps from West Virginia, which are not ramps, like you're thinking, like to drive up or something. These are plants. a lot like leeks but they have a very strong garlic flavor also and they're a really big thing uh, in the mountains of West Virginia they grow wild and there are ramp dinners everywhere you look in the springtime it's uh, and then what they do is they chop these things up 
and they cook them usually with like fried potatoes or something and serve them with like a ham dinner or something and they're delicious they're incredible there's nothing else like them and they're really hard to get to grow uh, in other areas but we looked up quite a few different um, tips on how to grow them so we planted them out in our woods because that's where they like to grow and hopefully they make it because I would love to have them here so bad anyway so leeks arugula mustard uh, mustard greens um, kale, spinach, uh, carrots, parsnips, beets, broccoli, turnips, celery or collard greens or kohlrabi, um, your peas, uh, radish, some more root vegetables, bok choy, uh, more greens, uh, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, Swiss chard. I always grow Swiss chard every year. There's quite a few things in there that I have not grown. I have not grown kohlrabi. I haven't grown um, Brussels sprouts, which I've been wanting to. Um, yeah, so it's just one bag like this and has 25 different uh, seed packets in here and they each come in their own little Ziploc plastic bag and they have a little scan code on front that tells you about the growing uh, tips, which is really nice. I think I'm going to like this and um, these are all organic seeds, but Please just, they say GMO free, okay? But let's talk about that. You, as a consumer, as a public consumer from stores, things like that, some like big box stores and seed stores in general, you are not gonna be able to get your hands on GMO seeds. This is something that the companies have come up with that uh, we have started to learn to look for in um, vegetables and things like that but the thing is the seeds that we get are not are not genetically modified they are okay Krusty and the geese are fighting um they are not genetically modified they are just plain old seeds and you as a regular consumer are not going to be able to get your hands on genetically modified seeds those are for uh, large industrial farmers and they have to sign contracts to get those seeds because if those seeds are found being used in anywhere that does not have a contract with said company then they are heftily fined and shut down if they don't comply so just don't pay attention to the non-gmo don't pay extra for the non-gmo they're just seeds now what you should look for is heirloom seeds which this is i really love it's a difference between uh, hybrid plants which are okay there's nothing wrong with hybrid plants I like heirloom seeds because you can get some more interesting varieties and uh, they've been proven for a lot of years so anyway a lot of different seeds in here I'm really excited I'm really excited to grow leeks I'm really excited to grow Brussels sprouts so wish me luck I've got to clear the ground first and that takes a little bit of time but I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna do a little bit at a time and see what happens. Oak, oak leaf green lettuce. That's interesting, I'm into it. So that's that, I'm excited to start these seeds. Uh, some of these seeds I will start inside, but most of these I'm just gonna try to direct so and see what happens. Because like I said, they need a little bit of cold weather. And right now, like on a Tuesday, <laughs> It is uh, 90 degrees in this greenhouse during the day and I have a window open and the door has been wide open all night, all day. So this thing heats up really fast. I will start my tomatoes and my peppers and warm weather plants and stuff like that in here because they need that warm weather. Okay. Woo. I had to come outside, it's hot in there. All right, oh my gosh, this weather is giving me life. Ugh, this weather. This weather is giving me life, like straight up. Okay, so I have another exciting thing to share with you guys.